Uh, look, as you know, this program is a PC and snowflake free zone. If you don't believe in free speech, well, feel free to tune out now. Senator Malcolm Roberts joins me on the program. Good morning, Malcolm. How are you? I'm well, thanks, Marcus. How are you? I'm OK. Uh, look, I know that you've been a little unwell of late, and I'm, I'm glad that we could uh, finally get you on to have a chat because there's a lot of things to mull over. You're well, though? Yes, I'm very well. Thank you. Very, Good. very well. Good. OK. Um, there is a reason why the US Black Lives Matter use the clench fist their leaders openly admit they are Marxists and they promote anti-capitalism, dismantling the nuclear family, defunding police. I mean, this is almost like communism hiding in plain sight, is it not? What do you mean almost like? It is. It, it is, Marcus. And, uh, you know, they, they don't go off data. They go off ideology because they run off the same thing um, that people are doing here in Australia. They, what they do is they fabricate a problem it contradicts the data, which I'm happy to go into if we have the time. They fabricate a problem, then they concoct a victim, and then they conjure an oppressor, and then they pretend a solution. And then what they do is they disarm minds by invoking PC. So people are afraid to speak up, yep. and, and they are afraid to think. And so many, many people disagree with what this, these Marxist mobs are doing in America. Trump has rightly called them out as Marxists yes. and, and, and wanting to destroy the country. What they then do is they anoint and align other beneficiaries to get them on board. And then they kill debate and stop discussion. And it's, it's intimidation. And then what they, have, what they do is they use gutless politicians to fabricate systems that put in place their policies, and their policies are Marxist. They're communist policies, and they, all they're interested in, Marcus, is control. They're interested in control and nothing else. And they do it, as we know, through things like riots, protests, acts of vandalism, not only uh, in the United States, but, I mean, gosh, this thing has been infected. Uh, well, it's infected Australia, um, sadly, and we, we know uh, that they've targeted a number of our cultural um, assets, including statues of Jap uh, Captain James Cook and, and the like. And, uh, I mean, yet many Australians still don't realise that behind this tricky name, BLM, I mean, it's ridiculous. They're, they're, it's almost like they're trying to pull the wool over their, our eyes. It, it's, I'm lucky, and we are lucky in our community, that we have people like yourself and Pauline Hanson and others that notice that this is going on and, and call it out for what it is. Well, you're absolutely correct, and I want to compliment you, Marcus, because I saw a, a comment on your Facebook page, quote attributed to you, and you said, I don't want to tell you what to think, I just want to help you think. So let's get to the data. I'm a strong believer in data because the facts are the facts. So I, I moved a motion in the Senate um, about the, um, the Institute of Criminology, the Australian Institute of Criminology, the 2020 report into deaths in custody in Australia. Yes. Notice I said deaths in custody. I didn't say black, white, indigenous, non-indigenous. Deaths in custody. Here are the facts. The 2017-18 rate of death in prison custody for indigenous people was 0 0.14 per 100 prisoners. And for non-indigenous persons was 0 0.18 per 100, slightly higher. Now, because of the small sample size, you know, we, we don't have millions of deaths in custody, you can't say that there's a difference there. But you certainly can say that the non-Indigenous is not lower than the Indigenous. The Indigenous are not higher. Okay? So that's very, very clear. Yes. And there's we, no difference. And, and, and yeah, do you want me to give you some more figures? Well, just before you do, it's important uh, to outline these figures because you can't argue with facts. I mean, you can try as, as hard as you can, but at the end of the day, uh, you won't win an argument uh, unless you produce relevant facts like you've just done, uh, like Jacinta Price has done on this program before, and of course, like Pauline Hanson's done. Uh, look, I think what happens, uh, and you're right, you mentioned gutless politicians, uh, strong words, but it cuts to the core of really what the problem is. Why is it that here in this country, we only have people like uh, you know, like yourself or Pauline or Jacinta Price and uh, a few other commentators who are happy to call it out for what it is and happy to speak their mind and happy to stand up for free speech, and yet 
I guess, some of the mainstream media. We saw what happened with Pauline uh, last week on the Nine Network. OK, maybe some of what she said was unpalatable, Malcolm, but it was the truth. A lot of the Correct. people, A lot of the people that were holed up in these apartment complexes don't speak English. Some of them do have drug addictions and some of them haven't been practising social distancing and, and the, the, you can't argue with the facts. That's why uh, Daniel Andrews, he said the same thing. The health uh, officer down there in Victoria said virtually the same thing. But when somebody like a Pauline Hanson or yourself or a Jacinta Price says it, uh, you know, you, you're dragged over the coals for it. What happened to free speech, Malcolm? Well, it's, it's really simple. When, when people uh, try to control, which is what the media is, those in the media are doing when they're telling lies or when they're misrepresenting things, always beneath control, Marcus, there is fear. They're afraid of facts. Now, uh, you know, those facts I just quoted to you, um, I tried to move a motion in the Senate just simply to, to announce those facts. And the facts came from a 2020 Australian Institute of Criminology report into deaths in custody. The publisher of that report is the Australian government. Now, this will shock you. And probably won't shock you, maybe not shock you, because you're aware of what the real problem is, oh, gutless politicians. I but know. I was stopped from uh, that motion. I was not allowed to put forward the motion that simply tabled the data. That's all it did. Well, all I wanted to do, I didn't yes. want to say who was right or wrong. I just wanted to put the data out. The government and the Labor Party... Uh, colluded to stop me putting up the data. And that's the problem. We've got gutless politicians who are afraid of data, and what they do is they use their own, own emotions, their own biases, to sway people. And people are sick of this, because I make it very clear. I'm a, I represent the people of Queensland and Australia. Every speech in the Senate, I start with the words, I am a servant to the people of Queensland and Australia. Yes. I listen, I speak up, I push... And I pursue to support the people. I serve the people. That's what is wrong in this country. We have politicians thinking the people serves the government. The people serve the politicians. That is complete rubbish. And that is the fundamental error in this country now. We have got government controlling things instead of government serving things. Government shouldn't be fixing um, the economy. Government should create an environment in which... Small businesses, large businesses, employees, individuals can contribute. That's how we were in, in the 1900s right through the 1920s when Australia had the number one highest position for gross domestic product per person, highest per capita income in the world. And we have slowly decreased that until we've become a shell of ourselves early this year and then we slammed that in, in the COVID response. We need to get back not just to where we were in February, we need to get back to where we were in 1920s in terms of being the leaders in the world for per capita income. Australians are capable of doing that. All we need to do is fix the damn systems that the governments have put in place over the last 80 years. Why do governments in this country uh, kowtow to Beijing, China, uh, and why is it that our economy isn't set up to be more self-sufficient, Malcolm? Well, it's really simple. Um, we have a number of things. I haven't got time to go into all one at the moment, but I'm happy to do that one day in the future if Please. you want. Yes. But we've had a number of changes that have been put in place under the global approach the elites are pushing since the formation of the UN. Now, I, I can rattle them off. There are many. But yes. if, you, if you just look at some of them, the Lima Declaration in 1975 mm -hmm. that was signed by Gough Whitlam's Labor government, the following year, his arch enemy, Malcolm Fraser, the Liberal Prime Minister, ratified the damn thing. That destroyed our manufacturing markets. In 1992, we had the UN's Rio Declaration uh, for 21st century global governance. It was, it was masqueraded under supposedly uh, UNIDO, United Nations in Industrial Development Organization. Yep. And, and sorry, sorry, uh, that was Lima Declaration. But the, the Rio Declaration put in place an agenda to push climate change, which will get control, which is getting control of our energy, which is fundamental, our water, which is fundamental, our property rights, which are fundamental. And that was signed by Paul Keating's Labor government. In uh, 1996, John Howard's government said, we won't ratify the Kyoto Protocol, but we will comply with it. And that stole our productive capacity yeah. in, our, in, in, in that it took our property rights off our farmers. That's what's happened. And now we've got basically nationalised farming that is controlled by regulations over their inputs and sometimes over the way they do their very farming. We don't have... We have nationalised farming now. Then we have the Paris Agreement in, nine, in uh, 2015 and a lot of international trade agreements and other agreements 
that have destroyed our productive capacity, destroyed our governance, destroyed our, our sovereignty. We don't control our country anymore. Foreigners do. They control some aspects of our immigration. This is why Liberal and Labor are pushing policies that are helping foreigners and foreign entities, unelected bureaucrats, and we are opposing them. We need to get our country's control back in the hands of Australians. What will it take, uh, the passion that you've garnered, and uh, in, in, I can hear it quite clearly, um, you and Pauline and others who, uh, who fight for the sovereignty of Australia, how do we generate more passion within the community? I know that obviously the One Nation Party, yourself and others, do have a, a strong following. But how do we make this go? I mean, it should be mainstream. This thought pattern that you've just so eloquently uh, described for us in the last couple of minutes, this thought pattern should be prevalent. It should be first of mind, top of mind for all Australians. How well, do we overcome the barriers, the obstacles to get this front of mind for hardworking Australians who, who basically just want their country back, want to be able to go to work, want to see the hard work they're doing, uh, pay dividends, be able to afford uh, to buy their own property, uh, to pay fair uh, prices for things like fuel and energy costs, electricity and utilities, and also... Also, more importantly, to be able to look back on the history of our country with pride and feel respect for our flag without being made so bloody guilty or to feel so bloody guilty the fact that we may be white and we may be Australian, for God's sake. Well, I, I love your passion too. Have a, have a look at these basic facts. Pauline Hanson came out of the Liberal Party and, and Mark Latham came out of the Labor Party. Half of our voters are former disgruntled Labor voters. Half of our voters are former disgruntled LNP voters. And our, our votes are going up every election. We have a higher um, vote for our One Nation. And what we need to do is to keep speaking the facts, Marcus, keep using the data and put more pressure on, on uh, the Liberal Labor duopoly. Because fundamentally, the bureaucrats run this country and they're pushing policies that, that, are, uh, that unelected bureaucrats from the UN pushed. Now, Scott Morrison came out and said something in October last year, October the 3rd in Sydney at the Lowy uh, Institute. He said he is tired, he will have a review into the uncountable internationalist bureaucrats. And we all knew that he was talking about the UN, but I also knew that he would not do anything about it. He was saying those words because he knew that we are resonating with the people over the UN's destruction of this country. Yes. We also know that I came out first and called the, the coronavirus what it really is, the Chinese Communist Party UN virus. The UN's World Health Organization colluded with the Chinese Communist Party to suppress the news of this virus, which labelled it to get a gallop around the world. Now, Scott Morrison, after I did that and after we com continued to bash the Chinese Communist Party, Scott Morrison came out and, and talked about the uh, Communist Party and started to hold them accountable with words. But... He turned around and said, we need to give the World Health Organization, a UN body, more power, the power of weapons inspectors. I mean, this is, it, they say one thing and they do another because that's why he's got the tag now, Scotty, for marketing. We've got to get away from, from people who are marketing people. They build facades and then sell them and get back to the basics of serving the country. Well, and that means spin. we need to speak about the facts yep. and use the data. Yep, and less spin, Malcolm. It's been great talking to you this morning. Uh, well, let's do this more often, please. Oh, I'd love to, mate. Love All right, to. then. Okay, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, Marcus. There he is, Senator Malcolm Roberts. What do you make of it? Give me a call, 13 12 69, 21 after 7. Marcus Paul in the morning.